Hi everybody, Sarah Anderson here and I'm here to show you today how to make a little tin with the um, new clockwork range that um, Lavinia Stamps have just released. This uses uh, one of the small tins that you can get from Lavinia Stamps along with the mystical mica infused mist sprays um, and um, other bits and pieces in between that I will list below. It's a little slidey tin, I slide it open and you can have whatever you like inside. I've popped a Lavinia Stamps chocolate um, in there. Um, you could put a little card in there, a little book. I'll show you at the end what, what some other ideas. And it's just decorated a little around the, around the edge. So, hope you enjoy. So I'll start this project with um, a collection of papers so that I can start stamping on them to collage with. Um, for the background here, I've got um chestnut bay sprayed um probably with a bit, little bit of sprinkling of spring moss and then i've used a different card stamp on here um using amble green and some brush show so i'm just going to get um get some of the chestnut and give it a quick spritz on the paper and I'm just going to put that to one side because I'm going to use that later. So that's on paperweight. And then I'm going to get some um, card, my multifarious card, my stencil. This one is, let me have a look, ambiance, I think. Yeah, ambiance. Um, and I'm going to be using this with some brush -o. But what I want is to want the print of this stencil, not the colour through it initially. So again, I'm just going to use a piece of card, get my amble green, and I'm spritzing through it onto the piece of paper to make the stencil green. But I've also got, I'm getting a twofer, that'll be used later on or on another piece. I'll pop that again to one side. So I've got um amber green on there i'm going to get my multifarious turn the stencil over and then i found that if i get a kitchen roll just roll it across just to press that down and get a nice I'm, I'm basically stamping with my stencil and then i need a sprinkle of black this is um those of you not used brush over before not used this one Black um, is made up of a lot of different pigments in here to get that black. So when you sprinkle it, you're getting all those colours. And I love the blue in here. Now you hardly need any. And you can always put some more on if you need it. But less is more. If you hear that, I don't know whether you'll be able to pick that up on the film. But that was the cat trying to... He's been trying to climb up my legs and now he's messing somewhere behind me. There we go, that's the um, the brush out through the green. And I'm just going to give the I'm just gonna give that a bit of a blast from the dryer. That stops the green and the black kind of merging into a puddly mess. So it's just gonna heat through um, and dry off a bit some of that black. Now it doesn't seem to be bothering my stencils at all. I don't hold it hugely in one place. Um, they seem to be doing okay and then we'll pick it up and there we go now there's somewhere to put that and I'll just give it a quick mop up with my paper towel or I'll give it another blast with my dryer and what's really lovely about combining the mystical sprays with the brush is you're going to get those, I don't know if you can pick that up and look, you'll see a bit of the light, the, the shimmer from the mysticals, that mica spray picks up all that mica. So <clears throat> I've created that for using later. And I've also got some card. This is a piece I've, I've been working with and that I've spritzed just like I did that paper with the chestnut spray with a hint of the... Um, at spring moss just give, gives it a bit of um a bit of color i guess so we're going to start with our small tin 
and the tin um, lid fits a piece of card measuring, now I've written this down somewhere, 4.7 across there by 7.6. So it's 4.7 by 7.6 and that will just fit on there. Now you can make it smaller or larger, it's up to you. That's what I've done. And then I used, oh, I, put this out. No. I used a corner punch to punch, curve my corners. Um, if you've not got one of these, you can hand cut them. So that's my piece of card ready to collage on to make the top, what's going to be the top of my tin. So that's going to go on there. There we go. I'm going to start with, I'm going to be using First Fine Claire Fallen Leaves throughout. That's, that's the only ink pad I've used with this. So I'm going to start with the small heart and I'm going to stamp it. I've got a wobble on my table. For some reason, um, I've lost one of the base, like little plasticky things that holds it level on my glass mat, but I think we're okay. I, I had to clean up because I mislaid one of my little cogs, so just be careful. They are tiny, and, um, and it was my favourite one that I mislaid, but... Thankfully, found it stuck to the back of another stamp. So I've been very, very careful with them since, and I've been placing them on a um, on an acrylic pad because um, what I was doing was just using the end of my finger with it, and that's that's how I lost it. So there we go. Stamped that small heart onto my um, card, and I'm going to stamp it again. This is a piece just like the one I've, I've just made but it's a bit drier so i'm going to use this one so that brush owen um, mystical spray combo i'm going to stamp another one of these hearts because i'm going to cut out the center i'm going to choose one that's got a little bit of a little bit of white space but also some some of that blue that i like and a hint of the orange there we go And cutting this one out, I'm going to cut around the um, the outer bit of the inner heart, if that makes any sense. Um, and I can get away with there not being a, a line there at the point. Because you just don't notice it when you, when you mount it up because it's shaded brown. There we go. I'm just going to cut that. I'm going to stop as if there was a line. There isn't. And carry on round. Pick up that darker line. And there we go. There's the heart. I just use a glue stick to glue that on. in the middle. Now I'm going to let it sit for a minute before I trim off that edge um, otherwise I find it moves. Uh, so just leave that there for a second and then what I'm going to add is some um, stamping from the cogs sets. So I'm using um, cog sets two and three um, as well as um, the clock, well, one of the clocks from the clock set was two, and uh, the, the po pocket watch, which I love, I love that name, it's called Tock. <laughs> so here's Tock. Pop that on there. And it's just going to sit in that bottom corner. Obviously, you can do any arrangement of these um, stamps however you like them really it that's the beauty of collage that's that um, I'm 
that one I'm going to stamp again onto some of this spray brush o combo so I'll pop that to that side to remind me in a second and the other one I need is this one which is from the clock set sorry hit the um, mount then it gave you a bit of a wobble I'm going to pop that in there. And again, I'm going to add a bit of colour on there by adding that little bit coloured in. So we'll stamp that one. And although I'm only using a, a tiny bit of it, I, I quite like stamping the whole piece because although i'll just use a section i'll use the other half of that in another project so that's that and then the top of the clock no, the watch sorry stamp that down there And then with um, talk, I think I'll go. There's a there's a few choices you could make about where you're going to um, cut along here. I'm going to choose that very broad line, but you might want to reduce your clock face slightly by cutting round one of the inner lines, or make it bigger by going one of the outer ones. That's that's up to you. That's that one. And we'll trim this one. I might trim that one a bit smaller and go around that little piece. Little circle. There we go. Again, I'm going to use a glue stick. Pop that on there. Now, it doesn't matter what um, number you've got showing. I don't need to match that up at all because it doesn't make any difference. With Toc, the pocket watch, though, I did line that one up because the number 12 would be would be where the um oh, i don't know what you call that the the little handly bit <laughs> yeah so i'm just gonna press those down and then get my scissors and i can trim those off so that's that heart i made earlier edge overlap that's that um, clock face and as you can see I end up that's the waist piece but I can glue that onto the edge of um, on the edge of a piece of card not on that one because it wouldn't show up but um, if I was using that as a background that would make another addition on a different a different project I just need to trim around that corner And trim this around there. Okay. Now let's add some little cogs. There's loads of different cogs. I think there's about mm, six in a set, something like that. So if you buy all three cog sets, you've got 18 cogs to play with, which are very nice. I'm just going to stamp these. That top corner. You can like, join those together as if they are cogs that relate to each other. Um, I'll add this one, I think. 
little tiny one. So Cog Set 3 is full of lots of little tiny ones and contains the my favourite one that I mislaid and have now found. <laughs> I might use it on this one, this is my favourite. It's the solid, it's the solid one, it just gives quite a nice depth. Okay, make sure you put it back without losing it. <laughs> One of these texture stamps, this is texture stamp number two. Can you see it's got, it, it kind of fades. It's got almost a texture fade round, round the edges and I'm just loving all these little dots and dashes and stamping the edge of it, stinking up the edge of it. Gives you a really nice um, way to make a board around you know i am going to add some stencil brushing as well but i just really like that that speckled speckledy effect so i'll just keep going around add those i've chosen just to add them in the um sprayed area not over the um watch or the cog particularly but that's just preference choose what you would like and there we go it's a bit tricky working with these same um, mystical misty sprays because of all the of all the shine but they they have such a such a lovely effect okay so stencil brush um i'm just using the same versa fine claire so we're gonna make sure i'm not on a gluey patch I'm going to turn this over, I think. Ooh. Okay. Work off my page and onto it. It's just going to, um, basically, it saves me putting a board around. Makes it stand off the tin better. collage on top I love 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 adding circles I really really like them um I started off using hole punch dots I've got little box of them permanently lives near me I've got little packets of these in my um journaling kit, uh, on the go kits but <clears throat> last time I was at the shop I picked up a set of three punches and they have three different sizes of holes, which I got very excited about. So I'm using the two bigger ones this time um, to punch out of the card that I made earlier. Now I've taken, you'll see, they come with a catch, catch or that catches the holes. Um, I've taken it off my bigger one. Um, I'll show you why in a minute. Um, it just means I... I have to make sure I know where where it's uh, pinged to. Now, obviously, I don't need to do this in card if I don't want. I could have used a paper version of this, but since I've, I'll have leftover bits of this card, I might as well use it. So they're the bigger ones. And then... I just want um, three of these little tiny ones. And they are tiny, <laughs> tiny little holes. You can tip them out. There we go. Let's do another one since I've got the last one already. It'll be in there somewhere. But yeah, there you see it appeared. It's number four now. Um, I'm gonna get Tock out again. My pocket watch. And stamp it. How can you not move and still not be able to find things? I'm sure it's not just me. Okay. I'm going to stamp this 
on just onto a piece of white paper. There we go. Put it off. And then getting my um, my punch, and this is why I've taken the base off. I can see. Um, where I'm making that punch hole, I'm just going to punch some numerals out. There's one. And you could pick um, numerals that mean something to you, that are a date, uh, if this was a gift for somebody. Uh, yeah, I've just picked three random numbers, numerals, but there we go. And then pop those on my um, on the front of this so let's I put now I probably I've got one of those little sticky tools but uh, I can never find it so but I can always find a pin so I just pop a bit of glue on the pin and use that to pick these up because they are ridiculously tiny and fiddly so put that on there there's one of the papery ones The numbers I'm going to slightly overlap that. Now, I was a very good teacher before I said numerals because they aren't numbers, they are numerals, but every now and again I forget. There we go. I think it's along the same lines. This is not calling this a rectangle because theoretically it is an oblong because squares are also rectangles. But we're getting a bit into the mathematical depths of the uh, vocabulary there so we won't worry about it it's just we were <laughs> we were discussing it at school the other day it's on my mind i really like these little tiny ones my friend calls them sarah confetti it's like sarah confetti in miniature one a little bit off and I'll give that a trim there we go so trim that off and then I get a pencil and give it a little bit of texture and kind of defines it merges it into the background slightly it's better if you don't do this as soon as you glue them on because they ping off And there we are, that's the top of our tin. Let's go into glue on there. And what I use is the Bippity Boppity glue. It's a really, really good, strong white glue and has a fabulous name, so why wouldn't you use it? So. Mine's picked up some mica in that pin. So it's a bit, cool, bit, bit sparkly white glue. Um, just give that a flip over. Now it doesn't matter which way up you do this. I like to push the tin up for that lid, but that's again preference. So I'm just lining it up with the edges of the tin. Just like you would mount a piece of card onto a, a card, blank. You're just doing the same thing with this. There we go. Just a I don't want to get my gluey finger stuck, so I'm just using a piece of Paper. That's why one of the things I love about working on paper, there's always a resource underneath me. There we go. What we're going to do is though, is we're going to add some decoration around the side and inside. 
move that away so it's a bit clearer. And you can see. Now, sometimes when I've been stamping for a while, I've got bits and bobs that have, um, you know, you, you can use bits of under paper. Um, if you've not got anything, if you've got a clean sheet, you might want to make yourself just a little bit of textured something. Oh, and we'll also, forgotten, we'll also need to stamp this to find the words to stick on the top as a highlight. Pop that there. Forgot about that now. Can add a bit of texture onto this. And I'll add some cogs. Pure play, this is. I found it very, very relaxing. So I'm going to cut out Joy is Timeless from here. And you could choose, you could choose words from here, you could choose words from other um, loving your stamp sets that you own. You could you could add words from a, an old book and make up some found poetry. But I'm going to say that joy is timeless because it is. And also because I just, I get a lot of joy out of playing with things like this, especially when they're little. There we go. And then for the inside, I'm going to use my trimmer, which is next to me. I'll show you in a second. I'll just trim the edge of that because I'm going to pop that inside here. I'm just going to tear that. I'm not going to worry that I've not used that cog because it doesn't matter at all. So that's just going to sit the edge there. Can you see? I might add a few more cogs now. Um use these ones that are out and we'll pop those on there and again I'm going to use the bippity boppity glue I do love saying that it's like being in Mary Poppins is it Mary Poppins that you would find that Line that up on the edge of the tin, like that, and then I can add a bit of collage inside there, which might include something like those um, clock faces we were doing earlier. I mainly use the bippity boppity when I want it to adhere to the tin as well, so that's like that. But when I want to add it to the paper, I can just use my um, my glue stick again. Oh, whatever your preferred glue is, really. Any more? Put another one in. Put that up there. Another piece of Sarah confetti. Obviously, you can you, you can rename that to match your own name. Put another bit in. I want to put another word in there. Let's have a look. Um, how about clocks? I love a clock. I'm just loving all this 
steampunky imagery the clock so i've just got i've got too many ideas for the time i've got to play so i think these are going to keep me busy for a good while I really like the um, the font traces used on those. Fits really well, and it's nice small writing. There we go. Pencil. You see how they move when you've only freshly glued them. Not that it really matters because it's quite a sketchy little mark that you're adding. So there we go. So that's the inside of our our tin. And now we're just going to do the outside. I'm going to get the paper I sprayed earlier. And I think, <clears throat> I think I'll add some of the word stamping. And um, possibly a bit of that texture, we'll see. I'm just going to stamp this very randomly. I don't want it perfect. I want a bit of variety of um, depth of colour. So we've got paler bits and darker bits like that. And I'm going to just use some thin strips. Around now let's have a little look by eye. Just want a slither really. So however you manage your slither, this is still a bit damp, which is why it's tearing, but it does mean um, I'm getting a bit of variety of width. Okay. It might be too big. We'll see. We can tear it off. Tear this over. Slowly over the damp bit. See, it's something very satisfying about tearing paper as well. So much in this project, stamping, putting out, spraying, tearing. All things I find relaxing. So I think what I'm going to go for is rather than go all the way around, I'm just going to do the corner on this one. I'll show you some alternatives as well in a minute. Again, bitty bobbity glue. Oops. So adding it to that corner, I think we'll get away with that bit there, but we'll see. Bear it up a little bit more with a piece with a piece. Let's find a darker piece. I'm gonna save my sticky fingers and use a bit of pet. Oh well, scotch I think that is, but any um any glue stick will do. There we are. And then just find another word, I think. Uh, what should we have this time? Do a bit of fantasy. Funky bit of lettering. Vintage fantasy, it's actually says, but we're just going for fantasy. Pop. 
that on that corner just as a little spot of red and there we go and there we have it our little decorated tin pop all sorts of gifts in there you might want to pop a little lavinia stamp same chocolate in i've done some other um tins and with those so this was the fairy one for the latest challenge i trimmed um a strip of that brush o card all the way around to decorate that as well as the little corner of torn paper collage there's another one this is one of the bigger tins and on this one again i added a, a strip all the way around and the top it's a it's a bit of a large tin so i just felt it needed a bit more color um as well as that torn corner these this is the next size up tin and has a um a clear window so i added some cogs round trimmed the paper to fit round there and inside this one added um a base there i've got little toadstools growing in my um in my clocks and this one contains a little a little concertina book which obviously could have you could personalize however you like you could um you could have different words it could be a poem um it could have photos in if you wanted there's all sorts of things you could put in here little tags um there's so much so much variety there's also you know variety on on the pattern that you put on the lid this is another one i've run out of tins but i can show you how that that might start to look completely different to this one you know might add some more dots and and some words and and again you've got you've got another tin so i hope you've enjoyed that please please let me know if you make some of these because they're a lot of fun to make and i i just love seeing what everybody else has done because you all have different colors that you'll use different stamps that you'll use um and uh, and i just love seeing what you've done so thanks for listening to me thanks for sharing the, this past half an hour or so uh, with uh, making a little tin see you soon